Hello my queens, how y'all doing? It's Thanks and today we are going to be doing a do-it-yourself project. It is the Balcony Greenhouse Garden. Uh, well, greenhouse anyways, uh, as you've seen in my, on my Instagram and on my other YouTube videos. Uh, so before we get started, I know I joke about uh, safety before because, you know, it's pretty common sense to use safety, right? Uh, but for this project, it is actually very essential for you to get some protective gears uh, because it can cut you. Okay, um, it's not as fun as being cut by a bitch because that's fun drama. Uh, but this one, you will, you might be cut, and some of you, it's fine, just get disinfected. Some of you might have to go to the hospital because that's who you are. Anyways, uh, definitely have insulated gloves. Your gardening gloves is fine. Um, you know, long sleeve um, shirts, pants, you know, if you're prone to accidents, right? Definitely wear shoes for this as well. And that's pretty much it. And also use your brain, not your heart use some common sense okay so I've made a do-it-yourself balcony greenhouse for many many reasons I'm gonna show it to you and then we're gonna talk so this is part of the greenhouse that I've done right here very very beautiful here is my tunnel again let's go inside my hole guys everybody loves my hole right my hole is nice and spacious and you can fit all that inside it's pretty tight and neat compact it's a beautiful hole probably one of the best hole in the world that you've ever seen that's yes, very very beautiful hole um, so there are many reasons for you to do a greenhouse do-it-yourself project or have a greenhouse itself uh, a greenhouse sometimes is a little bit more expensive than a lot of us can afford and some of us who live in an apartment building like myself cannot do a greenhouse so we kind of do something like this right so there are many reasons as i mentioned to do a greenhouse uh, one of the main reasons is water rain yes it helps it protect it helps to protect your plants from the environment but mainly from the rainwater. Rainwater, yes, is very very good for your plants because it doesn't have chlorine or chemicals inside like our drinking water but at the same time if it's constantly raining 24 7 for like a few weeks it's gonna kill these beautiful babies and you're gonna be crying and you'll be like honey I've killed my babies please give me your credit cards so I can buy some more and he'll be like bitch you crazy I ain't giving you my credit card and then you're gonna be like fine you're not getting hit tonight and he's like here you go here's my credit card but anyways um, it helped it to protect it from the rain so that way it won't rot from overwatering because it's not even your fault right so that's one of the main reasons and also it allows you to control when you water your plants so some of these plants require a lot of stressing to bring out its beautiful colors some of these plants just require sunlight to bring out its beautiful colors, right? So this allows you to stress it as much as you want to before you give it water. It's controlled watering. Okay, that's one of the main reasons. Another reason for this is to protect it from the sunlight. So sunlight is, yes, very, very good for, uh, for the plants, but at the same time, it's very, very harsh. So sunlight is directional. It will beam in and it just hits your plant like this. Right? Um, and that's very harsh when um, that, that, that will give you a more of a higher contrast singe color to your plants versus let's say if it was in a greenhouse if you notice greenhouse plants look much 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 more beautiful more pastel more vibrant more faded vibrant type of color right so the polyethylene plastic that we use on here um, helps it to diffuse the light so when the sun hits here what it does in here is it just shatters all over the place instead of just one going directional it will shatter it diffuse it so it just goes this way this way every way all over the place right so if it hits your plants all over the place instead of just directional which is really, really great for the plants at the same time so those of you, those of you who do photographer photography, knows exactly what I'm talking about. Those of you, those of you who don't, here's an example. This is a picture taken with flash at nighttime, and it makes your skin look harsh. You look fugly. No one's gonna take you home if they see you in a picture like that, right? Exactly. So when it diffuses light, it looks like this. You're all pretty up. Oh my God, gorgeous. I can't see that imperfection that well, honey. I will take you home. No worries. I might put a ring on it too or you can put a ring on me, whichever. But that's what that will do, okay? Number three is it will keep the heat inside. So I live in a, uh, an apartment and I live right 
right right by the lake over there you can you can actually see the lake on good days you definitely see lake ontario right over there um, and what that does is i get tons and tons of breeze up here days that are like 35 degrees celsius i get it for like what 27 28 up here so and that's a problem especially if i want to bring out the beautiful colors in these right beautiful beautiful colors in these i can't because it's too cool a lot of them like i mentioned needs high temperature to bring out that beautiful color that it has like this is bringing out the beautiful colors okay all right so it keeps the heat inside at the exact same time um, but with that being said it's very important for you to understand that if you are fully encasing your whole entire greenhouse you need to push air out push air in and push air out somehow because if you don't stale air overheating will also rot your plant now with mine i'm super lucky because i have railings right there there's holes and it's not 100 percent enclosed you can see that and also the shelving unit has holes underneath you know railings so i have i still have air pushing in and pushing out so i don't i don't have a problem with you know not having a fan right i mean you guys are perfect fans and all but still and I'm, I'm just kidding so i don't have to worry about that and there's tons of you know wind coolness coming in and out constantly so i don't have to worry about that so those of you who fully enclose that you have to know uh, you have to be very very aware if there's any airflow in your in your greenhouse or not okay very very important and lastly it helps protect it from the shitty shit that you know the birds have shit on my plants that has happened too many times girl Girl, there, there's been some of these, I, I think my uh, Japanese purple has been shitted on right over here. It's been shitted on by freaking pigeons and birds. Ugh. Anyway, so that's, that's the other reason. And that's pretty much it. So let's go inside and let's, let's put together the stuff that we need. Okay. Let's All right, you guys. So these are the tools and materials that I use to put together my do-it-yourself greenhouse. The very first thing we need, of course, oh, the very first, oh my God, very, I'm thirsty, I'm very thirsty. The very first thing we need to do is, of course, use our brains and common sense. Come, come on, come on, girls. Don't hurt yourself. It's not our time to PMS. Okay, don't bleed. Uh, also, if you need help, definitely call a man friend, even if it's even if it's not your significant others, as long as he has nice man hands to handle these frames. Mm, girl. Okay. Joking aside, we need a measuring tape right here. It's very, very important to measure how long or the length of our shelving unit is, right? We wanna go buy something that's close or that's close or a little bit more than what our shelving unit is right we never want to buy you know purchase something that's shorter like if it was this short then i'd have such a huge gap in between and it won't be get protected this one is actually much longer than my shelving unit so what i did was i just cut it up right so always measure first before you go shopping and you know because like even though he says he's seven inches he's probably five and a half best close to six and that is a little disappointing sometimes when you get home right right okay so insulated gloves is very very important these are winter gloves and they helped a lot honestly they helped a lot with handling this thing i don't get poked i don't get scraped when i wear this when i'm handling it. so this is very very important to use when you're handling the frame okay i use shears to cut out the plastic wire cutters to cut out the frames if it's too long and i just cut it just so it's good enough you might need a hammer i don't think i did need to use the hammer just in case you need, you need to use a hammer packing tape to just you know tape it together i also use velcro tape as well for that um, my greenhouse is four pieces and i use velcro tape to put to cover to use uh, to use the plastic just cover the in between so that way if i need to just lift it i just remove it easily and i can just put it back on easily without having to waste more tape right okay so once that's done we're gonna go get once you have all that we're gonna go get a wireframe and plastic so these two are the main two items, okay? This is called a galvanized wire frame or fencing frame, and the plastic is called polyethylene plastic. Uh, I'll leave those two items in the description for you to find wherever. You can find these at your local Home Depot, or your local Rona, or your local Lowe's, whichever ones. If you don't have those in your country, I don't know. Go look it up, Google it up. 
Um, yeah, so you can find them, both of them, in those two, in, in Home Depot, not a problem. Um, so this frame is, is called galvanized uh, metal, uh, galvanized wire frame. It's also malleable as well, which means that you can bend it any way you want to. Like us, you know, we sometimes bend over and then we snap. So you bend and snap. See? So this came in as uh, 48 inches. No, 48 inches by five foot. Was it 48? Yeah, 48 inches. No. Five foot by 36 inches. So this was five foot, which was like about 50 something inches, I believe. And this is the 36 inch right here. So this way is too short for our, you know, uh, for our shelving unit. Um, and this way is too long, but this way is perfect, right? Even though it's too long, all we do is use our wire cutters, and cut the frame to close to the exact uh, measurement, okay? Now, because it's malleable, you can bend it any way you want to. So before, so this is how I have it now. Before, this was actually rolled up into the opposite way. Let me show you. It was rolled up like this, okay? Okay, and that's no bueno. That's not what we want. It's rolled up like this, right? So what I did was I unrolled it, flattened it, and then um, I just re-rolled it into the orientation that I want it to be. Simple, 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 simple. And when you're handling this, definitely use, sorry, there you go, see? Once that's done, unroll it, and there you go. Right. But before you do that, cut it into pieces, right? Cut it into the way you want it, flatten it out, and put your plastic on top. Usually when I put the plastic on top, I cut it much, much bigger than what the frame is, like up to out here. So that way I can just like uh, put it underneath and just tape it together. You see there's a piece of tape right here? That's how I do. Okay, once that's done and then re-roll it because then it will be much easier for you. And that's how I made my um, do-it-yourself greenhouse. Pretty easy, right? It's, that, it's actually that easy. Uh, you might need to do some extra work because how I've put mine together, I have like a little sleeve right here. These things goes right into the, uh, the shelving unit as an anchor, like that, and I just push it that way so it just won't fly off. So you might need to come up with a better ways uh, of anchoring it in, but that's how I do it. And that is it. So I'm gonna show you some extra thing with the Velcro right here. Okay, let's head outside. Okay, so as you can see, it's currently raining right now. It's definitely working. See all this is being protected, right? All that is being protected right now. And I was mentioning before, my greenhouse is in four pieces. One, two, three, and four over there. There are little uh, gaps in between, like this right here, where um, I can't really put the whole entire in. I had to put it into pieces. And how I managed to cover this is I cut a piece of plastic that's bigger than what it should be. Then I use the Velcro tape that I mentioned to put it inside. Let me see right here. Put it inside. Just un-Velcro and let's lift it up. And that's it. So that's how I managed to cover that area up. So that is it for this do-it-yourself guide. Um, hopefully it helps you guys out. Let me know what you think of it. I know a lot of you love it. And a lot of you are waiting for, you know, this is how you do it. And that's how you do it. And that's it. Um, I'm enjoying the nice rain water it's giving me at the moment. I'm enjoying the protection for, of my hole inside because my hole inside here needs a lot of protection. All these beautiful beauties, right? Anyways, hopefully it helps you guys out. And yeah, that's it. I, I, honestly, I love coming out here just to look at these things a lot of the time. I love it. Nice. I'll see you guys later. Uh, if you're new to the channel, press subscribe. If you like the video, definitely a thumbs up. And yeah, go get laid. Bye guys.